Yo guys, welcome back to King Owls, and yes, I'm now here for Deontay Wilder's next fight options. And yeah, I mean, th there are still some big fights out there for him, in my opinion, especially with, um, you know, everything going on in Saudi Arabia right now with the boxing. So, you know, and, and Saudi Arabia, you know, right now are making massive fights, and I still feel like Wilder's is not going to take an easy fight back in my opinion after he's lost to Parker I see him getting right back in there against a good tough opponent and I've got five names here who it could be starting with Martin Bacoli I feel like this is a fight that makes sense for Wilder to get back into things Martin Bacoli you know he's going on about returning he wants a return fight so I on it like I feel like it's a good fight for Wilder to get back into the swing of things. And again, for Bacoli, you know, he wants a big fight. Let's see, you know, the levels that Martin Bacoli is actually at. And I feel like this is a good fight uh, for both guys. It's a good fight to see where Martin Bacoli's at uh, against, you know, a Deontay Wilder who's no longer at his best, looking, uh, you know, you know, coming off a loss and not looking great uh, in his last fight getting schooled over the whole 12 rounds against Jose Parker. But I feel like it's uh, it's a good stylistic matchup for Wilder. I feel like, you know, we'll be able to keep away from Bacoli, keep him at range. Then he'll eventually be able to, uh, you know, land that right hand. Martin Bacoli's not an all-out boxer or anything like that. Now, I don't feel like Martin Bacoli's pressure that he will. I don't feel like, well, I don't think Martin Bacoli will be able to pressure Wilder too much especially over 12 rounds as well. Martin Bacoli, you know, bound to get caught by Wilder. And I don't see Bacoli having the style or the stamina to be able to walk Deontay Wilder down and get away with it for the whole 12 rounds. And I don't see him being able to take Wilder out either, to be honest with you. I feel like he, I feel like Bacoli's too sloppy and I think it's a winnable, uh, a, a fight that Wilder will win. But I feel like it's a good fight to see where Bacoli's at as well. He goes on saying he wants a big fight. Take this fight. I feel like it's a good fight. Like a, to a co-main event of a big fight in Saudi or something. So, yeah. Next up, uh, Daniel Dubois. I doubt this will happen, but I feel like it might not be next, but it could be because Saudi money can really persuade you to take these fights. Is it risky for Dubois? Yes, but again, I don't know fully where Wilder's at right now. Again, like, but I feel like it's a fight that Dubois would win, uh, could win. I'm not saying he will win, actually. It's a, it's an interesting fight overall, in my opinion. I think it's winnable for Dubois. But as of now, I still feel like Wilder might have his number, like could have his number here, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, like it's not like Dubois a really like pressure fighter who puts it on you. Because if he puts it on you, it's if someone puts it on Deontay Wilder, that's where he's in his biggest trouble. And back Wilder up into a corner, gets him up on the ropes, always full on pressure. Wilder, you know, can't keep you at range to be able to eventually come at you and, you know, land that massive right hand. Um, Dubois not a real good pressure fighter, in my opinion. He's not a... He's, I don't think his style is... The style to be able to beat someone like Deontay Wilder, in my opinion. Even though Deontay Wilder's probably like, you know, he's washed right now. But I yeah, overall, I yeah, I don't think that Dubois has the style, that pressure style to be able to beat Deontay Wilder. But he could win the fight though. There is possibility that he could win. Dubois is an explosive fighter. So I mean, you never know if he could get his rim going, he could win. But as of now, I do think Wilder would beat um, Daniel Dubois, to be honest with you. But again, it's an interesting fight, and I feel like it's a fight that would get people interested. Do I think it will happen next? No. But I feel like, you know, possibly with Saudi money there, we could see this fight at some point. I would like it if we could. Next up, Ajit Kabayel. I feel like this is actually a really dangerous fight for Deontay Wilder, to be fair. Stylistic wise, I do feel like Caballero's a hard fight for Wilder. He is a good pressure fighter who puts it on you. Small as well. He is a small pressure fighter who, you know, like he who does slip who does slip shots well. I mean, yeah, and Caballero's a real game guy, never ducks away from a challenge. I do see this fight possible, to be honest with you, Wilder and Caballero. I think it's a, I feel like it's a good fight because I feel like it, I feel like it's definitely a 
Good, big, winnable fight for Caballero, in my opinion. He pressures really well, pits on you, loves to dig into the body, and just loves to back you down. Never really likes it. You know, Caballero doesn't really take a backward step. And, you know, he can box well as well, to be fair, behind the jab well. I feel like Caballero's a really good and underrated fighter, in my opinion. He showed it against uh, McMuddle in his last one. I feel like Caballero can really cause wilder issues. And, you know, Caballero can box well, and he can also put it on you a lot as well. Uh, you, you know, a, a small a, a small guy with that kind of, you know, Andy Ruiz build, but, you know, Caballero's pressure is just different in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like this fight can be difficult for Wilder, to be fair, to fully, you know, try and get some momentum going, uh, in, in my opinion. I feel like Caballero could be hard for Wilder to find out. So I feel like this is a difficult fight for Wilder. People will look at this fight and, you know, loads of casuals especially will look at this fight and feel like, oh, yeah, this is an easy fight for Wilder. It's not at all. It is not an easy fight for Wilder at all. This is a really difficult one, in my opinion. It is. Uh, anyway, next up, we've got Francis Ngannou. You know, I feel like this is still a fight to make. Let's see how Ngannou gets on against AJ in March. But if Ngannou can put on a half-decent performance against AJ, I think Ngannou will lose to AJ. Um, but if Ngannou can come out of that fight with a decent amount of pride, though, putting on a decent performance, then... You know, I see him fighting Deontay Wilder. If he loses badly to AJ, I don't know if I see Ngannou fully boxing again. I think he might just go over to the PFL. But if he can do a good job against AJ, at least, and, you know, do a good job, even, if, you know, if he loses, which he probably will. But if he can come out of that loss with uh, with some, you know, confidence, um, you know, with still people behind him thinking that, you know, he's a real threat, then... I feel like it's a really interesting fight for the uh, for Deontay Wilder again. And I feel like Deontay Wilder beats Francis Ngannou. I know, you know, people get me like, eh, you can't doubt Francis Ngannou. I feel like Ngannou's got a good style for Wilder in order to be able to land that right hand. O yeah, honestly, that's what I think. Uh, but, you know, look, we haven't seen, you know, for, like the, the full version of Francis Ngannou. Let's see how he uh, performs against AJ. Okay, next up, we've got... Andy Ruiz Jr. as our last um, uh, as our last final one. This is a fight that many have wanted to see for a long time. This is a fight that many have wanted to see. They've had some negotiation issues, I feel like, getting this fight done. Ruiz asking for too much money. Well, Saudi will give you money. Saudi will give you money. I, I, this is a fight I want to see. I do. And I feel like, again, it's a good winnable fight for both. If Ruiz can get it up close, then... And really put it on Wilder with his quick hands, then Wilder could be in trouble. But again, there's a chance that you know Wilder can just keep him at that, just keep him at that range, keep him at the distance. Then eventually, you know, find him out and and land that right hand. But you know, I just I don't think Wilder's the same. So I see Ruiz actually being able to put Wilder in some big trouble here, though. But again, I feel like there's a big chance that Ruiz just gets caught with that right hand, though, in my opinion. He'll eventually, I feel like I see Ruiz eventually taking his foot off the gas, possibly, and getting caught. But again, though, I think Wilder is vulnerable. So I feel like this is a great fight, Wilder versus Andy Ruiz Jr. I feel like all five I've said are great fights, uh, to be honest with you. All five I've said are, you know, good, solid fights for Wilder, in my opinion. So yeah, they're um yeah, they're why I think Wilder's possible next moves are, in my opinion. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, King Speech on a bit. Thanks for watching. Peace out.